don't know who the fuck to trust Is you my friend or my foe? I must be nice bro Yeah, she give me that Give me as well I remember back when I was younger I was happy Now they feel like no one understand me I'm good at all this silly I'm about to damn Hello and welcome to my new studio Um, this is what I'm going to be filming today So before we get started Let me just mention that this setup cost me A few hundred dollars And, uh, it took a few days To get everything set up for just this one video Out of, uh, four sub parts About everything I know about uh, working out and uh, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed it really helped me out so uh, now let's get into the video all right part one I don't know how I'm gonna name it yet but it's uh, all about every exercise that I really know that you can do at home not including like machines and stuff because I haven't been to a real gym <laughs> and yeah you might be a little shocked that I've never been to a real gym I've always worked out at home but I mean we have an amazing setup here at home so it's not like this is just from some dumbbells that I bought so a little history about me uh, why you should trust me. So, well, first I'm 15. I brought my bench up 80 pounds in one year. Um, I've been working out for just one year, uh, a year and a month now, I think. I'm self-taught. Uh, I never, I've, I've never had someone teach me. I've learned everything on my own with a few exceptions of my grandpa giving me a little bit of advice, my dad giving me a little bit of advice, but nothing tremendous. The first thing I did when I started working out was read this book right here. Uh, it's the Arnold Schwarzenegger Complete, uh, Complete Encyclopedia of Modern Bodybuilding. Uh, it gave me uh, a good place to start and I'd recommend if you're interested to check out the book. It definitely helps. And the next thing I did was I really went on YouTube and I started doing everything I could to figure out anything I could. Some big channels were uh, Jeff Nippard, Greg Doucette, and later on Anthony Mantella. But Greg Doucette and uh, Jeff Nippard really did actually help. Uh, gave me a lot of good advice. Uh, I've also taught two or three to four people really. I've worked out with a few people to give them some advice a couple of times and I've had uh, two or three people actually come by and I've given them advice and taught them what to do, taught them the ropes really on how to work out. I gained 30 pounds of muscle in just about one year uh, and if you don't believe it that's, that's okay. Uh, I have a before and after picture right here of one year difference. Uh, you can see in the first picture I really uh, started with a good amount of chest muscle and a decent frame work to start. I didn't have anything tremendous but I did have a good start. I've always been into physical activity since I was incredibly young. Um, you know I never really got into video games in a ton. I play very unoften. I really like video editing and working out <laughs> and so this works out perfectly. You know let's start with uh, exercises just like I said. Now I'm going to start from all the way down at the bottom and we're going all the way up to the top ending with chest, starting with calves. And yeah, that brings our first point, calves. Now, a lot of people think that you can just work your thighs and that's it and uh, a lot of people don't realize you need to target your calves if you want them to grow. At home, what you can do for calves is get a bench. Here, you can see a video right here. I keep forgetting to put, I'm going to, this is why it's going to take so long to make this video because I'm going to get a video clip of every exercise. So you can really see that I'm contracting my calf all the way down and then I'm pulling it all the way up. I'm holding a dumbbell in one hand, I'm doing one calf at a time to isolate the calf or else one calf is where you're pushing a lot more weight. And this way you also don't have to be holding a 500 pound dumbbell uh, just to work both your calves. One calf takes a lot less, it's, you know, it's dumbbells versus barbells. Now any real motion like this at a gym, it's really nice. They usually have calf raise machines, those are perfect. Uh, donkey raise machines, uh, different types of calf raise machines, um, sitting calf raises machines, any type of those will suffice. Definitely always try to hit that. What I'd recommend hitting is a solid three to six sets per leg workout if you're doing it twice a week. I only really hit calves for three to five sets once to twice a week depending on how much I do legs, but also I'm not focused on legs. I'm gonna compete in men's physique, so legs don't matter at this point. I'm still paying attention to legs. It's just not as important as upper body. I also really hate legs, but still hit them no matter what. Uh, especially at home though, that's that's one of the big factors on why I don't hit legs so much, is if I was at a gym, I'd be able to hit them so much. I love uh, whatever this machine is. I completely forgot the name. Uh, actual calf raise machines. They're really nice because you don't have to worry about balancing and all that. You just have to work about the actual contraction. Next episode, I will talk about mind muscle connections, by the way. Next, let's go to thighs. Thighs are, you know, the main part of the leg. They're important for many things. I do have d pretty decent thighs right now. Uh, I can deadlift 330 pounds and I can squat three plates, so 315. So the main exercises I'd say uh, start with deadlift. Deadlift is really nice if you really want to hit legs more than lower back. Uh, do sumo, and that's right here. And if you want to hit lower back more, do uh, standard, or whatever it's called. I think it's just regular, I think it's just called deadlift versus sumo deadlift. 
So the difference really is where you're holding the bar and how far away your legs are from each other. Uh, in one of the variations, you can see that all I'm doing is uh, you're a lot closer to the ground. People prefer different ones. You can see which one you like more. Uh, but if you want to target legs more, do sumo. Big, big leg builder is squats. No matter what, everyone will tell you the same thing. Squats will build your legs. That's the most important one. Uh, you need heavy exercises. It's a super compound exercise. It works so many muscles. You can see on this diagram right here, it's very good for you. Then we can move on to lunges. Now, lunges, I used to do a lot. I don't like them too much anymore because I've gotten really bored of them. I used to do them so much. Uh, they're super, really good for your legs. I'm pretty sure they work your side radius a lot. Uh, but you can see this diagram, it'll show you what it works. Uh, just have to stop my head, I can't remember a ton of these details. Uh, I can remember most though. Then we'll go on to leg curls. I have my notes right there. So leg curls are really good for your hamstrings. And hamstrings are very important for the thickness of your leg, really. Uh, all the front muscles on your leg is ready to show off, but then if you turn to a side profile and you got nothing there, it just looks so, it just really diminishes the entire physique. So definitely always work your hamstrings. Unknown to popular belief, squats don't actually work your hamstrings very much. They will still work your hamstrings, just really barely at all. You can see just from a mechanical standpoint that squats do not work your hamstrings. Uh, Jeff Nicker has a video on this, you can check it out. Uh, I'll try to link it in the description if I remember. There's a lot of stuff I have to remember to do this video. I'd recommend hitting, or I'll, I'll give it a better plan in another upcoming video, but here's just kind of what I was saying. Legs at least once a week, I'd recommend getting in 9 to 16 sets uh, of legs, depending on how heavy you go, how long you have. Um, personally, I do 12 to 16, including calves. Next, we move on to ab roller. And, you know, a lot of people don't know this, even though it's a very common knowledge, or at least you might have heard this, a hundred times before, abs are made in the kitchen. Now, this is true. This is 100% true. I would not have abs if um, I didn't diet well, if I didn't eat well. Uh, you don't even have to build core muscle, really. Uh, Greg Doucette never worked out his abs, uh, at least in his later career. And you can see how amazing his physique is, his core is. It's just all low body fat. If you want to have a small waist, you don't have to work your core. If you're not going for physique and you're going for actual strength, I'll give you some. Let's start with the ab roller. Now, ab roller is my favorite thing. I still hit a few sets of abs every week. I still like to hit my abs, but it's only like three sets a week. It's nothing tremendous. Nothing that's going to make a huge difference. Really just going to keep them in shape. Uh, keep my core decently strong. Now, ab rollers are really good because it's the full contraction or the full stretch of the abs and the full contraction of the abs. Um, there are many videos on how to do ab rollers properly. Uh, it's pretty hard to do them right unless you watch our video. There's so many different ways to mess it up uh, to get optimal use out of your exercise. Next, let's move on to the vacuum. Now, the vacuum I do all the time. Vacuums are really good. It makes it so you can have a, it works the ins, okay. Vacuums are really great. You can see on the diagram right here what a vacuum works. Now, a vacuum is the internal part of your abs. Abs have many, many sections. It's probably the most complicated of anywhere on your body. Um, but you know, abs is not just one muscle group as a lot of people think. Um, it'd be like saying my arms are one muscle group. It's really uh, three to four to, you know, six to seven, depending on what way you look at it. Um, you know, you have your tricep, three heads, uh, long head, you know, uh, and your bicep, two heads. So saying abs is one is completely false. So you want to make sure you hit multiple parts of your abs if you're going to work them for strength. Uh, and that includes the interior part of your abs. So let's go back on topic, back to the vacuum. And I do this all around. Really, what I do is at school, I just, whenever I'm walking in the halls, I just hold a vacuum. And, uh... You can do it of one or two ways. If you're at home just by yourself, you can take a full breath in and hold there for as long as you can. And then if you're uh, busy doing something, you can just hold your chest in like that, like actually using the muscles rather than also using your air. Uh, this helps with having a small waist, it has, helps with having a tapered waist, it helps with a lot of things, it helps when you're actually posing to hold a vacuum. Um, I love the vacuum, I'm a very big fan of the vacuum. It's my favorite ab exercise, even though it's not really for actual core development, it's really for posing and having a tapered waist. God, these lights are hot. I have three massive lights right here to get me all lit up. Next, we move on to leg raises. Leg raises are very nice. I love leg raises. Um, if you can't do them, you can do a modified version, which is knee raises right here. Knee raises are very uh, good for beginners. And if you still can't do that, uh, you can look up other variations of it, but knee raises are a good start for a lot of people. Now, a lot of the problem with uh, leg raises is your grip strength. You have to increase your grip strength a ton to hold the bar for long enough to do 12 or so reps of leg raises. 
And then obviously for super advanced you can go all the way to the top, all the way to the bottom. Just make sure you're really controlling it. Do not swing. That's a really hard thing not to do, but you should not swing. This is the one I was very fond of back uh, when I started, uh, when we just got our pull down bar in our basement. And it's this. Um, I don't know the exact term of it. Um, I just call them prayer pull downs really because you're kind of praying and you're pulling down. They're really good for strength of the core. It's one of the you know most strengthening parts uh, or the most strengthening exercise you can really do for your core since it's actually weighted uh, specifically to the exact weight you need to use to get the optimal rep range. And then finally we got partner abs. Now partner abs are a really fun one if you have a gym partner. Um, they look a little weird <laughs> but they're incredibly good. You'll see if you ever do them they're very fun and they're very good for your core. Now we can move on to the lower back and as I mentioned before deadlifts. This is really the safest uh, exercise you can do for your lower back. There's a lot of uh, misinformation about what you can do for your lower back. A lot of exercises already work your lower back like squat, bent over row, many things. But um, if you really want to develop your lower back, you want to do uh, deadlifts. There's a thing called good mornings. Don't do those because you could break your spine really bad. Please don't do them. You get hurt. I haven't been injured yet. I've been very careful in the gym doing a lot of stuff. I'm also young, so I haven't got been injured. Then we can move on to the lats. Now the lats are uh, this part of your back, your two sides. You can see right here in a diagram. You can see right here on my back. Uh, you can flex it, you can have it uncontract. That was probably a really, really bad audio because I just faced the wall. And they're very important. There's two things you can do for your back, and that's thicken it or widen it. Now, they do go hand in hand, obviously, but there's some stuff you can do specifically to widen it more than it's, uh, thicken it, and there's some stuff you can do more to thicken it than widen it. So let's start with pull downs. This is my favorite back exercise by far. It might be one of my favorite exercises next to uh, the bench press and all that. But basically, the reason I like it so much is because you can get the optimal rep range you need for your back. For example, pull ups. You might only be able to do four of them, and be only able to do eight of them. With pull downs, you're doing the exact same motion with different grip length or different grip variations, uh, pronated or sunated, or supinated, uh, however it is. Uh, I'm not a kinesiologist, I just know some stuff. And you can get the exact rep range you want. I like to hit 8 to 12. Um, it's been shown that, at least in bodybuilders, that the harder the the more power lift you are with your back, the more it builds. Uh, Ronnie Coleman, Dorian Yates, they both have the same thing going for them. Now, this might not be 100% true, but anyway, around you should be lifting decently heavy. Depending on the way you grab the bar, can choose if you want to widen your back or thicken it. Uh, pull down with a uh, supinated, uh, it will work your bicep more and it will thicken your back since you're moving this way. A pull down will contract your back more, making it wider. You can see how I'm contracting it rather than pushing it together. It's how I would describe it. Then you can go to a different type of bent over row. Uh, I don't know the exact name of this one either. I just know it's a variation of a bent over row. Uh, I use it sometimes to try to shock the muscle. And you can see it right here. It's where the barbell is instead of vertical, it's horizontal. It works on thickening your back more than widening it. Uh, instead of a normal bent over row right here, where it's more focused on the full contraction of your back, making it so your back gets wider instead of thicker. Uh, different variations, different ways, shock the muscle, make sure you do proper technique. If you don't know what you're doing, look it up. And that's where I'd say the Encyclopedia of Modern Bodybuilding comes in most handy. You can learn the exact form for a lot of exercises, so I'd recommend that is the reason I'd use that book. Then you know you got pull-ups, like I've mentioned before already. Um, and why I don't like pull-ups as much as pull-downs, but if you do not have a pull-down machine or any of that, do pull-ups. Now we go to the top part of your back. Now the back is the back, and every back exercise will work every other muscle in your back, but there's some stuff you can do to work more of your back muscles and less of other back muscles. And one of these is shoulder shrugs. Now shoulder shrugs work your traps, not your shoulders. Very important to note. They would do not work your shoulders in any way, shape, or form. Your delts are used for either this motion, this motion, this motion, this motion, but not this motion. They're shrugs. Shrugs work your traps. You can see right here, my trap contracts, not my shoulder. And I really like using these. Uh, you should not count them for your back. It's kind of like calves, the calves of your back. Add in a few shoulder shrugs into your workout and you'll be building up some mountain traps in no time. 
And then you also got another variation of a row. Now this is like the rowing machines, if you've ever had one of those, except it's weighted. Uh, you can see stereotypically in gyms, different angle you row at will determine what you work more. If you do it down here, it'll work your lower back more and your lats more. If you do it up to here, it'll work your traps more and your rear delts more. So now we move on to the front delt. Now the front delt you should almost never have to worry about if you're choosing between any stuff and the front delt, specifically such as shoulder press versus a bench press, always choose the bench press. Uh, everyone's front delt is always overdeveloped. You can see Arnold Schwarzenegger, very, everyone has Arnold Schwarzenegger. His front delt, in my opinion, was overdeveloped. No hate towards him. He had the most incredible physique of all time. Just pointing out that his front delt is way more developed because he always focused on his front delt a ton. For some people, such as me, I need to hit my front delt because I haven't been hitting it very much. I've been doing incline press, or I've been doing incline bench press mostly, and I've skipped out on pretty much every front delt exercise just because uh, I know it gets overdeveloped. So you can see my shoulders are pretty nice all the way around. You can see my front delt a little smaller than the rest, but then also you can see right here is where it would fill into, and I want to fill up my uh, front of my shoulder. So I'm just going to up sets all around my shoulder basically. Now, as much as uh, front delt, side delt, and rear delt are all separated. They're all, you know, the same muscle. They're all the shoulder. So any variation of any shoulder exercise will work other parts of the shoulder, but you can target certain parts of the shoulder more. So right away, front delt. We got the dumbbell press. Everyone knows the dumbbell press. Uh, it's one of the most common exercises at the gym. Uh, I really like it. It's very fun, and but it's even more fun than that is the barbell press. Now you can do this on a bench, and I really like it just because you're stationary. You can really focus on mind-muscle connection. Uh, compared to a dumbbell press, you're kind of wobbly. It kind of bends your back a little bit more. Uh, it can give you a greater risk of injury, but they're both really good. So I'd recommend laying on a bench whenever you do these, um, unless you're lifting really light, like I kind of am. I'm only doing 18 to 24 pounds instead of like 96. Because if you start to do really, if you start to do a lot of weight with dumbbells, your back's going to bend more and more, and it's really just going to really hurt you in the long run. So always be on a bench if you're doing heavy weights. Then also, if your front delt's very lacking, you can do Arnold presses. Now, Arnold presses are a variation where you, instead of pressing straight up and back down, straight up, back down, as you can see right here, you are instead rotating it up and rotating it back down, sitting in the front rather than on the side. So instead of this, you're doing this and you will feel a difference. Let's now move on to the side delt. The side delt is very important. If you have to optimize any part of the delt, definitely always choose a side delt. It gives you a wide frame. It makes your shoulders look bouldery. It makes you look amazing from a side profile and a front profile. They're just amazing all around. So the most common one is the lateral raise. Lateral raises are awesome. There's three different variations really. One's where you're more bent over, you're working your rear delt and your side delt a lot more. The other one's where you're kind of going up like this, perfectly straight. You're uh, pouring over like you're pouring out something really heavy and you're lifting slightly back rather than forward, slightly back more. So you hit your rear delt and your side delt more. Rear delt's very lacked. Always hit your rear delt as much as you can. It's not very fun, but it makes your shorts look 3D. And I am talking about the side delt still, just mentioning the rear delt for in a sec. There's all types of different lateral raises, the Egyptian lateral raise, uh, very, uh, uh, quite a few different other ones, but I don't have the equipment for that, so I can only show these. Uh, cable rows are, or cable lateral raises are very common too. Uh, I'm going to have to put a video up here of someone doing one. Now we can go to the rear delt, and the most, uh, the, there's really only one very good one for your rear delt, and that's the reverse pec deck. Uh, I don't have a pec deck machine, which is really just a chest press machine, but you do it reverse. Um, so what I do instead, I lay on a bench and I lift backwards, as you see here. Now we move on to everyone's favorite thing, the arms. Triceps, it has three heads, you can see right here. So depending on the variation you do, it can work different parts of your head more, and different parts less, just like every other muscle group. Now, pull downs are my favorite ones by far, just because uh, I have kind of weak elbow uh, tendons. So I can only, I can't do very much weight uh, if I do behind the head stuff, so it's such as skull crushers. So pull downs are my uh, favorite and best one for me. Everyone has a different best one. If your elbows don't hurt, you can do so many more things than I can. Uh, and that's very lucky. That's why my triceps are a little bit smaller than they should be. Uh, you might not be able to tell, but uh, someone who would be judging could. Then we got skull crushers. Now skull crushers, I can do, it just they kind of hurt my elbows, but I'm working up a tolerance to it by strengthening my tendons. And you can see right here, this is, these are skull crushers. It gets a full contraction and a full uh, decontraction of your tricep. 
Then you got close grip bench press. This works your chest too. If you do push pull leg split, like I'd recommend, you can do this one uh, pretty much anywhere in your workout. I'd recommend doing it after your heavy lifts, like bench press. Uh, you can don't do too close a grip, or you'll hurt your wrist. Don't do too far of a grip, or else you won't work your triceps optimally. Now I can move on to the biceps. Biceps have the most exercises out of any uh, thing, in my opinion. It's all the same thing. It's all this motion, this motion, or this motion. I'd recommend always staying away from this motion, such as hammer curls, because it doesn't uh, do the full motion of the bicep. Biceps meant to rotate and contract as well as this long strand of your forearm is to do, to rotate and contract. You can see my bicep right here versus here. Big difference. So you really want to get the full contraction by twisting, and that's why I'd recommend all these exercises right here. I'll just zoom down the list. Preacher curls. Incline curls. Machine curls. Barbell curls. And my favorite, sevens. Now we can move on just for a brief second. The forearms, uh, there's really, you don't really need to develop your forearms unless you're competing. Uh, so I'm going to be ready to stay away from this except for hand grip squeezers, whatever they are. They're really good for grip strength. They work a lot of your forearm at once. I recommend doing this uh, in between sets on a pull day since pull day you're working your uh, bicep as well and this will work your long head of your forearm so you want to optimize it with your bicep so it's not sore on opposite days. Rock climbers might need to work their forearms a lot but that's really about it. And finally we touch on my favorite muscle, the chest. Now there are quite a few things you can do for chest, many 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 machines for chest but then uh, for in general for equipment wise uh, barbells and dumbbells with plates and stuff uh, different levels of incline this. Never do flat unless you're working for strength and never do full incline unless your front delt is lacking. Uh, the difference, I'd recommend going up one or two to at most three clicks on your bench. Uh, you might think it's a little too little. It feels like too little, but trust me, it's all you need. Because all you're trying to do is hit the top part of your chest more than the bottom. Because in the long run, your chest is going to sag and you really don't want that. That's why my chest doesn't have very much under here, but it does have a lot just overall in thickness. You want a thick chest, not a droopy chest. So let's start with the bench press, the different grips. Uh, like I mentioned before, the closer your grip, the more it's going to work your tricep, the further your grip, the more it's going to work your chest. Uh, don't go too far or else you're not going to be able to do any motion. I'd recommend experimenting and finding what works best for you. Then you go on to dumbbell bench press. I'd recommend mixing this in to mix up your routine to shock the muscle. It's really the same thing, except at the top you want to touch the dumbbells, at least is what I do, because it gives you a full contraction of the chest and a full decontraction of the chest. You can see this versus this versus this. That's just a little bit more. They didn't go into flies. I used to do flies a lot. I actually used to hit 24 sets of chest every workout for a total of almost 50 a week. But flies are really nice. It was one of Arnold's, if not Arnold's favorite exercise, I always forget, but it's at least in its top like three. Now, flies, you can tear your chest on, so be very careful. Know what you're doing when you're doing flies. I usually do floor flies, actually, as you can probably see in the video, because they're way safer, because you can't overextend, but also the disadvantage is you can't extend to full. But the wrist reward ratio, I'd recommend floor flies. Then you got standard push ups if you don't have any equipment, really. Push ups are fine. And finally, you got pullovers. Now, pullovers, I mentioned in the previous video that. Um, Studies show that it doesn't expand the rib cage. Uh, once your rib cage is fused, it's fused, is what studies show. Yet Arnold and other bodybuilders say that it does expand it. It's right up to you to choose. Uh, I believe it doesn't, but I'll still do them because it does work your chest. It also works your back too, so if your back's incredibly sore but your chest isn't, this is not the exercise to do on that specific day. All right, if you watched this entire video, thank you. And if you did, definitely please subscribe. Like seriously, why would you watch this whole video and not subscribe to me? Uh, a lot of work put went into this, a full year of you know training on top of all the uh, writing I had to do and scripting for this episode and buying this whole setup. Of course this setup's not just for this video, but you know, I, I decided to put an extra effort even though I only have 130 subscribers. Just because, you know, I really like making videos, they're pretty fun. At least at the moment. I might get bored, but I'll try to pedal through. Well, thanks for watching.
slavery. Nine to five, grind and strive. Fucking nigga, pay me less.